Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting of May 1st, 2018. We're meeting the Emergency Service William Belden Training Room. Thank you to Chief Gaughan, Chief Dekoshak for allowing us to meet here. Uh, we will once again be meeting with the Finance Committee uh, in just a short time uh, to review annual town meetings, uh, warrants, and, and articles. Um, along those lines, annual town meeting is a week from tonight, Tuesday, May 8th at 7 p.m. at Smith Academy. So we hope everyone will be there and let your voices be heard. Uh, so we'll get right into our um, agenda items. So are there any announcements to be made, Marlene? Ed, do you have anything? No, I'm, I'm all set. Okay, so it was just a town meeting. is next yeah. Tuesday, the 8th. Uh, is there anybody here for public forum? Sir? Uh, just uh, wondering about the Hatfield Lions Club Pavilion today. Went down there and it was, the parking lot was being ripped up for the community gardens. The parking lot itself was? Yes. We had a plan. I talked with Mr. Lestowski about tying on up further off the property. Right. And today the parking lot is ripped up. Oh, for the water? Yes. Okay. I, I just wasn't sure where you were going with that. Though. Yeah, for a two okay. water line. Okay. And I'm just wondering, it was going around to talk to this afternoon. Okay. I was wondering why wasn't I aware of anything or why are we on private property ripping up blacktop? Please talk to me. The place could be rented out as far as anyone knows. Right. And I'm just wondering why. Yeah. Um, but, I wasn't aware of it. Uh, as luck would have it, our DPW director is here. Um, I, I wasn't aware of it, Bill. I, I know the community gardens themselves were doing some activities over the weekend, but you know that was for the garden side of things. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil, do you? Yeah, I, nope. I, I'll just comment on that because I waited for you to come down there because Tony said you were on your way down. And uh, to explain what had happened, uh, the original plan was to go to the hydrant and come off the hydrant and go to the gardens uh, for some reason. The main that were crosses the blacktop that you decided to dig there. Uh, we surely will restore it back to what it was. Uh, and I guess he had a conversation you, you don't want the curb cock in the driveway, so we're going to abandon that plan and go to the hydrant and do well, some hand digging around. I'm just wondering. If, so we thought we had an easement. We thought there was a utility easement over that water line. Right. And obviously there's not. And I discussed it with Tony about keeping it off the property. Yeah because that's Lions Club property, and whatever happens down the road, it shouldn't be on that property. Right. So why we're not tying into that line, say on school property, town property, that's what I, and we deflected from the plan, and no one seems to communicate anything until they dig up an old water line, and, and there's a 45 foot hole in the pavement. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, how can that happen? And why? Yeah. That seems, I mean, we're in discussion of what should happen. I went down there and met with them. And then we deviate from the plan on private property and just start ripping things up. Okay, well, I'll have a conversation with them tomorrow for sure. I mean, that line should be tied in. You could tie that line in right outside the blacktop of the pavement at the elementary school and go straight across where they pretty much want the outlet, correct? Down that end, correct, yes. And I'm just... I had told the Lions Club about this, that I had directed that we prefer not to have it on our property. At the last meeting, they all agreed. And, and you now, had a conversation with Tom prior to this? Yes. Okay, okay that's all I want. Okay, I'll address And it. he was told that he could not dig in the field, and that it was okay to go. There was an easement there, and have that. Okay, I'll have that discussion with him tomorrow. And the place sure is going to be rented. We have a, an event going on there. Okay. Excuse me. So, Phil, after you, you'll be speaking with Tony tomorrow. Yes. All right. Could you guys reach out to Billy and let him know sure. what the no what the outcome is and what the plan ahead is, and make sure well, it's sure a, want, make sure it's a coordinated effort. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, it's wasn't left in the best of condition. I mean, it's got to be dug up again and compacted. It was just blown back in and kind of left. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, not the best of condition. Yeah. Let's straighten that out. <laughs> Yeah, and come up with a plan and make sure everybody's on board. Up. Yeah. I just uh, have it done in a different way if we could. Okay. Yeah. I'd appreciate it. We'll keep you in the loop. Thank yeah. you. I, Thank you for your time. I think the whole idea is if there's going to have to be a change or an apparent change, we just need to make sure that you know our staff's letting the 
the businesses or the individuals or whoever's going to be impacted know before they move ahead, and move ahead so that everybody's understanding the explanation as to the reason why. Mm -hmm. So sorry about that, Bill. No, thank you. Okay. They'll be in touch tomorrow. Thanks. Yep, you're welcome. Thanks, Phil. <clears throat> Is there anybody else here for public forum? Bob? Yeah. Um, so I'm just here and on behalf of the 350th Anniversary Steering Committee. Um, we have officially announced the finalist logos for the logo competition for the, uh, the anniversary. Those are posted online at hatfield350.com. Um, just a reminder so everyone can go on, you can look at them there. Voting will take place at annual town meeting and at town hall day of elections. So it's open to any residents can vote, um, and then we will tally the votes. And uh, in June, depending on when the select board of selectmen's meeting is in June, mm -hmm. um, we'll make the announcement there. Um, so certainly, if anyone has any questions or wants to see them ahead of time, Hatfield350.com, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. So. Did you uh, end up receiving a lot of? Uh, we have 48 submissions. Wow. Um, Great. So the steering committee narrowed it down to four. Um, <laughs> you had your work cut out was, for you. Yes, which was very difficult. We spent yep. uh, spent about an hour and a half in here um, yep. with them up on the screen and getting them done. So uh, we appreciate everyone's entries. And, yep. um, you know, hopefully, uh, I, you know, regardless of which one of the four finalists we get, I think we'll, we'll have a good logo going forward for it. Yeah, no doubt. And I think part of the... Um, the process has been pretty cool and, and will continue until the selection is made is all this, the artists are all anonymous. Um, so it, it's not like, uh, you know, anybody can vote for a relative necessarily or a friend. They're, they're actually just going to vote on uh, the, the four submissions and, uh, and that'll be the logo for the 350th. So yep. that's everything, cool. Everything has been kept separate with yep. the logos and the forms and, and is completely anonymous. Um, we've gone above and beyond. Uh, yep. The finalists have been reached out to and told that everything is to remain anonymous. Uh, the steering committee doesn't know who's who. Um, so it's it's not until that day and, and we'll come in, we'll have the logos and the corresponding numbers will be separate. So we won't even know cool. who the winner is until that night. Yeah, awesome. So, which will be good. Great. Yeah. Thanks for all your efforts thus far. Thank you. <laughs> A couple months down, two years ago. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Is there anybody else here for public forum? Okay, seeing none um, under posted business, uh, Chief Gons here to give a uh, department update. Chief? Just quickly, two quick things. Um, the first thing is that um, we're, we're lucky enough, we were lucky enough within the last year to the fire, we have the fire association, which is members of departments. They do, the department, they do fundraising um, through raffles, through some other stuff, through the bonfire. Mm -hmm. We were lucky enough earlier in the year to, to they obtain that pickup truck that we utilize. Um, they purchased the picture, they donated it. We then lettered it with donated funds that were donated to the department. So all of that has is, is really been, been what I feel like successful. We've utilized it a number of times. We're not putting equipment in personal vehicles anymore. It really is a, a success. Um, with that, the, you know, we, we, uh, the Gator we have, which is the, the all-wheel drive, you know, four-wheel drive golf cart, per se, you know. Um, we, have it, so we, bought it, we got a surplus years ago. We've put some work into it. The mechanic, again, had to recently spend some time on it. Um, and so the association approached me and said that they are going to purchase uh, a new John Deere Gator for, for the, and donate it to the department um, through funds that they raised at the, at the, at, at the last uh, bonfire that they've been holding on to. Um, and so I, just, I know that we talked in the past, and it's good to get, get out ahead and talk to you about it. It's not acquired yet, but they're, they're working on it. Um, the, the town the city of Agawam purchased one. It's very similar. Mm -hmm. It will allow us to, to carry water up into the mountain. We now have that trail system on the top of the mountain that's, that exists. Um, it allows us to carry water. We can also be able to carry patients on it if someone gets injured. Um, it'll be able to be used at the 350th parade. It'll be able to use on other events in town. So it's, uh, it's, it's a huge asset. The one we have now actually gets a fair amount of use. Um, so we're just going to replace the one now. The one now will then send to the mechanic and the vehicle maintenance, and they can, they can declare it surplus or whatever process they'd like. Okay. Very simple. But once again, that, the people, the guys at the Fire Association, they're raising funds, and they're, they're giving back to the town. If you look at these two things, they probably, we're talking, you know, 20000 and, and and close to twenty. we We're probably, you know, probably close to $40,000 worth of donated stings mm -hmm. in the last year which is, you know, 
things are taxed, we don't take up tax dollars. Yeah, which is, absolutely. No, it's it's cool. very successful and, and yep. very appreciated. They, they, they do things very quietly. They never ask for yep. boo. They don't, you know, usually people don't even know. Um, the other thing is I just want to talk about a quick uh, fire prevention thing. So the code compliance issue, we, the, the fire marshal just recently came down with some changes. Um, they're actually changes that were implemented in 1998-99. Um, there was a 10-year grace period for existing structures. And we're talking about structures with six or more units. Um, so if it's a six family or if it's a five family in a business or a four family in two businesses, but structures with six or more units in which they have to comply and have monitored fire alarms and increased fire protection. So basically buildings were given 10 years in like 98, 99 to comply. Um, existing structures were. Um, and so what's happened is there's a kick, there's a kick up there, the fatal fires in Springfield. They've had some other fatal fires in multifamilies or damaging fires in multifamilies. And so the marshals come out and said, listen, I know it's 20 years since we, we, we implemented this, but in fact, the existing constructors didn't conform in, in that 20 years. And, and it's time that you, you, you take it to them and you take it to the property owners and you speak with them about conforming. It also came through the, the, the building inspector um, and the state building inspector. Um, so it's, it's basically come from two angles, and, and I've spoke with the building inspector here. We have about 10 structures in town, 10 buildings that are going to have to get fire alarms. And some of them have none at all. So which is obviously why they need to have them, because right. there is truly a higher risk in those buildings. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to reach out to those, uh, those property owners in the next couple of weeks and work with them on, on an implementation plan that's reasonable, but also you know, takes what the fire marshal is, is directing us to do and to conform. The other one is there's a cutting and welding, which is actually a hot works, which is what, what drove the, the fatal fire in Boston um, in the back bay. And, and the, there's some new regulations for hot works and cutting and welding. We probably also have about eight operations. I issue eight cutting and welding permits a year. So there's to be some greater, greater restrictions, not restrictions, but demands on them in terms of certifications and competencies before they have these processes. So it's hard. It's, it's two things that are going to, you know, two issues that are really going to have an effect on, on some commercial structures mm -hmm. and, and businesses alike. Um, we try to work with them, but they are really two of the bigger changes that are going to, that we've seen in the last few years. So that, that's really all I have. I just wanted to get that out there. And, and so how much, how much time will these so, owners will so have? I think the owners think we're going to talk about that. I think we're going to first, the first step is to get them to get a quote and, and get a, get a, get it somebody in there to, to tell them what will take to do it. And then we'll try to work on implementation. Preferably, I'd like to see them get quotes within 60 days. You know, um, you know, somewhat of design and, and, and a rough ballpark what they're going to have to do in 60 days, and then implement in six months. Um, but that being said, you know, if 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 I, we talk with a business and they need they need to do it eight months, then then we'll we'll, we'll do what we can. Um, you know, the the goal here is to to make is to eventually get the fire protection in. And, and to work in conjunction with the property owners. Okay. And you, you figure it's 10, 10 buildings in I town. believe it's 10 buildings. It's hard. It's yeah. not an easy thing to pick yeah. out. Yeah. But I, I figure it's, I look, it looks to be about 10. Um, so we'll, we'll work with them one by one. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, we worked on the, <coughs> we've worked with the, the commercial kitchens and the hoods and stuff like that over the years. And we've made significant improvements in that stuff. And that, some of that took time. As, as we know, I'm still working with the Legion and stuff. So... So the, the hot works permit will be another the procedure? The hot works permit is separate. It's a separate issue. It's a separate right. directive from the marshal. They both came the same day. You must have had a lot of time. And they both came the same day in which it said the hot works are some more regulations. I actually have to go to a hot works class in, in next month. Um, and anyone else who is going to do any hot works inspections on, on our behalf will have to go. Um, and then they'll have to send some people to training. But that, that's just a, that's a cost of doing business. It's right. probably a couple hours of their time. But it's just something new, you know. We used to do eight eight permits a year without a problem. Now it's just gonna be a little bit more for them and for us. But it'll it'll happen, and it's not it's not the end of the world. We'll be okay with it. We'll work with them. So that's really all I had. Okay, Excellent. great. Thank yeah. you. So thanks. Uh, thank you for the update. And thanks yeah. to the association. And once the gator is is purchased, yeah. I'll come back because you'll have to accept it. Yep. But I just wanted to get out ahead of it and make sure that everyone was on board with that and that it worked out for everybody. Yep. Great. Seems pretty reasonable. It's, we're yeah. going to replace it. The, the, the old one's going to go to surplus. It comes off the insurance. It comes off the plates. It'll go to the new one. Mm -hmm. So, all right, thank Great. you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Chief. Sure. Okay. Um, so we've got one more item of business to take care of before we meet with the Finance Committee. We're a little ahead of schedule. So, um, you know, in our packet, Ed, we have a... Uh, 
Teamsters Local 404 grievance form that came in from a D DPW um, employee. Uh, and it's, they have not been reimbursed uh, for a meal chit receipt um, for $10. And um, I've got all sorts of comments that I could make um, given the things going on. But uh, having said all that, uh, I would make a motion. Uh, the receipt was submitted for a meal that, was in t that the employee was entitled to, but it was from a convenience store. Therefore, the convenience store doesn't break down every item purchased. Like you get at Big Y, they tell you it's a milk, it's a this, it's just, you know, it's just here's what you, here's what it costs. That was submitted and the accountant refused to pay it. It got grieved to the DPW director who couldn't resolve it with the accountant, so it came to the Board of Selectmen. So I'm going to make a motion to have the accountant pay the $10 bill so we can alleviate and uh, close this grievance. So the motion's been made. Is there a second? Yes, uh, I'll second the motion. Okay. And I think we need to work out something in the future to satisfy procurement and, and state requirements on receipts. And I mean, yes, I mean, there's got to be something, a compromise, because definitely the, the person in question did do the work. He did, was entitled. He deserves it. It's, it's just an issue of how the receipt was hand it over, I guess so. Well, I, I guess we have to look at the contract, we have to look at, and then maybe in a future contract, we have to change the wordage, that's all. Yeah, well, I think the contract states that as long as a printed receipt is right. submitted along with, you know, uh, the, the charge statement or however it was paid for, then, then that's that. I okay. think what the accountant's looking yeah. for is an itemized um, listing of what was purchased, and some restaurants and businesses do that, and right. others don't. And we're not going to say you can't go to a certain location or restaurant right. or business to get your food because they don't give you the right kind of receipt. So, you know, the last one we got was for seven bucks. This one's for ten, and we have a lot more things on our plate than um, not paying seventeen dollars worth of meal receipts. So, uh, motions made and seconded. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, John. We're going to take a ten-minute recess, please, while the finance committee shows up. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're joined now by the Finance Committee, and we'll be reviewing um, some of the options that we'll, uh, we're going to be discussing some of the options available to us uh, in advance of town meeting so that uh, by the end of tonight's meeting, we should have a way forward um, for next Tuesday uh, as things stand as, as of right now. So. Um, with that, I'd like to welcome the Finance Committee to join Ed and I, Marlene, and we've got a lot of people in the audience as well. Um, Daryl, did you want to uh, open yeah, with I, anything? Or? Sure. I, Finance Committee, we met last Tuesday. We were not te te televised, um, obviously, but I guess I just wanted to start out by saying that this has probably been for us, you know, with the least one of the most frustrating budget seasons in a long time, um, and it's hard. And what we're going to propose is going to be cuts, and cuts that I know people are not ultimately happy with. And But I want to say that it has nothing to do with what we think, how departments are run. It has no negative connotations as far as that is concerned. We, we think our all, all departments are running well. We, we would love to support them at the budgets that they would like, but it's, it's, it's pretty simple mathematics. We have a pile of money in one hand, and we only have so much of it that we can spend right now. We're kind of hamstrung because we don't have free cash. We don't know when free cash is going, going to be, be certified. And that's not a great way to fix budgets, but it, it does help in some years. So I just kind of wanted to start with that and so that townspeople and everybody knew that it's, it's nothing personal. We looked at, we've looked at a couple of different budget items, some of what we've talked about in the last couple of weeks. We've talked about we, we could have an, imbalance, an unbalanced budget. We could, we could go to town meeting next week. We could go with the level funded budget and then hope we get free cash by the end of the year. 
we don't think that makes sense. That's not not a safe safe route to go. Um, the fiscally prudent thing to do would be um, what we have in front of us is is a budget that's a one percent reduction all across the board. Um, DPW is taking two percent. Um, thank you, Phil. Uh, some special circumstances because of what's the building project at at Town Hall. Um, then we don't necessarily need a cleaning service for a period of time, so we can save some money that way. Um, so that's prop. Go ahead. Can we mention that one of the significant increases in this year's budget will be for health insurance and retirement? Yeah. That that is something that's going to continue to challenge us in coming years until we, till the state finds a solution to that problem. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There, no. No doubt that that's that's an issue in the budget. We we did spend. There is some money in here to further correct our ongoing financial issues. We've got some money in there for Bay State Accounting, $60,000 for next year. Um, you know, we, we think, I think collectively think things are got, have gotten a lot better. Um, we're really excited about the fact that 17 has been booked. It's in the general ledger. Is that right, Derek? And we're, we're going through the final stages. Matter of fact, uh, Justin is working on Schedule A, which is great. So once Schedule A is done, um, then the hope is by the middle of this month or the third week, we'll get the auditors in here. However long it should take them, two to three, four weeks, hopefully shorter. Um, so our hope is that by the middle of June, we we have a draft copy from the auditor that can be sent to the state, to DOR. They can certify some free cash. We could have, if it's the selectman's choice, we could have a, another town, we could have a special town meeting before June 30th and, you know, carefully consider what we want to do with some of the free cash. I, am, I in no way think that the state's going to give all our free cash back, but I think they'll give us some of it. So, I don't know. Do you guys have nice anything summary. to add to that? <clears throat> I think the only thing that I would add, uh, and that was a great job, Daryl. I, I think just so people understand, because we've been doing this now for weeks and months, and the folks here have been at all the meetings as well. <clears throat> so the, um, the difficulty with the budget right now that we're experiencing really is, uh, as Betsy alluded to, um, roughly a hundred thousand dollar increase in the health insurance and benefits, um, some debt exclusion for projects that the town has has approved at town meeting that have come due. I, I guess my point is it, this: this isn't really anything to do with our past. Um, Fiscal challenges that we've been that we've been discussing over the last year or so. It, they're kind of two separate um, issues or, or or two separate concerns that we have. I, I just thought it might be important to clarify clarify that for people so they um, we, so that they understand that we've so. borrowed a lot of money in the past few yeah. years to fix some things that are certainly much needed to be fixed, but got to pay it back. <laughs> Yeah, we have, we have to pay it back. Uh, um, I, I guess the other thing I, I would wanted to add, is, you know, is we are we know this for the school is pretty tough. I believe it's one hundred sixteen thousand dollars, which I don't think any of us collectively are very happy about. I know other budgets are are taking a hit, but that's really hard on a school where school choice is important and we want to draw students and they're doing a great job and so you know that is you know as we discussed last week at our meeting that is one of the things we hope if free cash can be certified by the end of this year and we could have a special town meeting before june 30th then hopefully we could restore some money back into budgets mm -hmm. you know um 
it's tough to wait until the fall. Some budgets could wait until the fall, but for the school who's planning for a school year, I'm assuming that's a difficult, yeah. difficult thing to do to try to wait till October or November to get money to run their budget. So I, I just wanted to Thank you. point yeah. that out. So. Well, and well, and you know, and you're right. I, you know, from a from a school perspective, I know um, superintendents here and. Uh, Chairwoman Inglehart and, and Mr. Pashik, uh, we, we're meeting Thursday to to review the budget as it comes out this evening and brought forward. Um, but it, I do know that um, there are some programming changes and some personnel changes and and even um, reductions um, that that are going to be discussed on Thursday. Should the should this um, budget go forward with the one percent reduction right. so and that's, that's also true of some of the hours in some of the other departments yeah yeah oh yeah I right it's not it's not the yeah, schools only absolutely. it's everyone's affected by this everybody's um, affected. So. and and I guess the one thing we could talk about on uh, the budget that's in front of you um, you, you you'll notice that our under the levy limit has gone to forty eight thousand five hundred ninety two dollars um, we we that is in part, uh, of course, the one percent. It's in part, and, and the two percent, but also snow and ice, which we thought was going to be one hundred and five thousand dollars in deficit. I believe, Phil, we're at eighty-five thousand. Right? Is that what we decided? It's eighty-six. Yeah, he received 86, an invoice right, today. Right. Got got you got mm -hmm. got one other bill, but so there was was some savings there, um, and I. And I guess the question is, you know, we do have some wiggle room with that. That's, that's a lot of, we are often never that far under the levy limit. So, you know, I kind of but need it, that out for discussion as to do we want to rest, restore some money somewhere and at what level do we want to see that under the levy limit right. number. And so you're talking about the 48000 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. Well, for the for the public, they should know that Justin was suggesting us be something in that world. Yes, under. absolutely. And also that things do come up that we don't yeah. anticipate. Does yeah. this budget reflect the? I'm assuming no, based on what I know. Reflect the fifty thousand and the other. It does not. No. Okay. Yes, yeah, sure. yeah. it does yeah. not. Yeah. I mean, one thing I'd like to look at because I do think. You know, I'm concerned about the level of the cuts to the schools, largely because of our reliance on school choice and wanting to make sure that we maintain an attractive school. Could we, and would it make more sense to wait on the vehicle lease to use the free cash? Because again, a vehicle lease is something that, you know, if we wait three more months, it seems like it's not going to complicate too many, fact, uh, too many things. That saves us $30,000. And then I'd uh, look at maybe taking another 18000 from the levy limit to leave us at $30,592, and that would allow us to restore 48000 of that school's funding. And yes, the percent is much lower than the other departments. Still, the cut is significantly more dollar-wise. Um, so I think you know, folks could hopefully understand that. So, so you'd you'd be saying to uh, wait on the lease, but if we get once we get the free cash certified, to actually put the money back in. Do it as a priority. When we get the free cash, uh, we do the thirty thousand uh, dollar lease as we normally do. Well, so can we maybe via consensus, if now is the time to do it? So we. Again, for the folks at home, we, we have two budgets in front of us. One is yeah. level serviced budget, which is would bring us $114,000 over the levy limit. And I, for one, am not looking to go to town meeting with a budget that's higher than what we know we can afford. So, so the consensus is we can get rid of that one, right, everybody? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Is that? Yes. Okay. So we're looking at the budget that has, shows a 1% reduction. Um, I... I echo Sean's um, sentiment to, to a certain degree. Um, I had another thought today, um, which is uh, I think the vehicle lease is important. I think the timing of it is important, um, to be honest. 
But I did speak to Marlene, and uh, in Marlene's budget under the, um, uh, what do we call that, Marlene? Yeah, you know, like the, for, for contracted services of the future. Professional services. Professional services. services. The line item right now has 70000 in it. And we know we, we need some money to pay for some of the accounting services and other things that come up. But we could lower that by 30000 for now. And when free cash comes out, put that back. And use that thirty thousand to to Sean's point, potentially, if, if depending on how our conversation goes tonight, that that would be where at least forty-eight or fifty thousand comes back for the schools. I, I'm I am of, I am of the mind that when free cash is finally certified and we do have a meeting before the end of June, that all departments' budgets will be restored. That. That's how I feel right now. To a level funded. Um, to, to, a, to the level funded yeah. budget from 2018. So yeah. and I, I, I just want to make that clear because we have a lot of department heads well, here. Well, I don't necessarily yeah. feel that way personally as one that's, member. That's okay. I mean, I think we just don't know enough yet. Wait, right. Know, well, know, that's, yeah. I mean, it depends what, it what depends the amount is. It depends on what the numbers turn out. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, a 1% cut, you know, some, a reasonable level cut that I think we have to really see what the numbers come out yeah. to be. My, my concern with getting rid of the vehicle lease, and Mike, the chief, is here. I believe one of our police cars is not going to pass inspection. Is that That's what I've been told, fair yeah. and accurate? Yeah. Told by, by a, a shop? The shop mechanic the and the uh, state inspection. You have, I gave you a, a copy yeah. of my thing, so you have all that information. Okay. I, yeah. Is that, where is that? I don't have a copy of it. Yeah. That was that letter that. Oh, the letter that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, my concern That's about delaying. Uh, I, I like how you're thinking, Brian, because let's pay the first bills as they come up right. and pay the other bills later. My concern about taking the money out of the professional services is, we are. Is this true? We are already thirty thousand dollars in the hole for this fiscal year. Right. Needed to pay Bay State New thirty thousand for this fiscal year. We have been able to cover some of his expenses to date. Right. Some of the. But am I, am I right that thirty thousand dollars is still right? That's something we had not budgeted and, and, for. And right. there's nothing in this budget that we can do that will help that. Right. Right. The only way to help our eighteen budget is to get free cash. Oh, I understand that. Okay. Thank you Thank for you. explaining yep. that. I understand that. I'm just You're concerned. Don't want to have it again next Exactly. Year. Right. Right. No, that's a good that's a good point. I just, you know, they they are helping us in a very important way and I don't want anything to <coughs> slow down our remuneration of their mm -hmm. services. But and we have to prioritize, and I think clearly this year that's been one of our sort of articulated priorities. And so making sure our budget matches that that priority makes a lot of sense. Again, I go back to the vehicle lease because we're talking about a matter of months until we have the free cash, you know, 30000 of that free cash to be able to fund it. It seems like a larger sort of pseudo capital item that's the easiest to put off with the less risk. If we have to go to town meeting for more money for professional services, that depends on a lot of factors that we don't know right now. You know, how people feel about the way that we're using outside consulting services versus needing to get the vehicles that we typically get is a fairly straightforward sort of capital transaction that I think would be safer to go with. The only issue, though, is we, at least historically, and, you know, I could be wrong over the last couple of years, but we haven't used it as a capital item. It's an ongoing expense. Yeah. So basically it's no different than any other ongoing expense that you would pay for out of free cash. Sure. It, it, you're going to have to fund it next year Keeping somehow. Budget, sure. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're, it's different. I mean, presumably, at least with professional services, there would be a chance next year that you wouldn't need seventy thousand dollars worth of professional right. services, mm -hmm. so you wouldn't start the budget thirty thousand dollars in the hole, right. which is what you will do. Yeah. Theoretically, yeah. I mean that's part of the issue here today that we didn't mention, probably not for any reason, but that money that came out of free cash to fund last year, or not free cash, but money that we took out of stabilization to fund last year. Now you have to find it again, right? And it's not coming out of stabilization well, I mean, now. Yes, and no, the money is in there. So if we don't need it for professional services next year, next year we can move it. 
I mean, I think it's, all I'm yes. saying is it's potentially riskier if we're saying that we're going to, you know, because we don't even know how much free cash is. And we know that we've promised free cash for a variety of different things. So if we're going to a special town meeting saying we need this money for professional services, we've already committed to the services, and so we can't do project A, B, and C because we're only getting so much free cash back right now, <coughs> it's riskier based on our sort of committed obligations versus being able to, right now, put pause on the, on the vehicles and it's not going to affect anything other than delay the inspection, I guess, of the existing vehicle. It just seems like a... No, no it, it doesn't delay. It, he, there will be no vehicle that will be able to be used well, no, once August comes around. There's other vehicles. I mean, let's <laughs> other vehicles. Hey, 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 guys, guys, guys. Hey, Go ahead, like chief, 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 chief. So if, if we're going to use that argument of risk, mm -hmm. um, instead of taking the 30000 out of the services and replenishing that with free cash, which you said we might not even have available, mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, cruisers that are used for safety, for the public, mm -hmm. that you're saying, we're going to put it back, but we might not get free cash. So using your risk argument, it's riskier to not do the vehicle lease than it is the accounting service. Well, I would say that based on where our town's financial situation currently is, that wouldn't be true. Based on where our current situation is, it's riskier not to manage our finances in, in a way that the state is satisfied with. But I'm, I'm not disagreeing with, you know, overall no, I, the need brought, to have I a cruiser. That, but but bring how up many other cruisers do you have, I guess, one. is the question. Okay, so I mean we've got one and we're talking a matter of months. We're talking, we're talking a matter of months. We we're talking a matter of months. months. So what I'm talking about, yeah. so if one cruiser, if we don't have one that passes inspection, one of them um, breaks down, yeah. then you have no emergency yeah. response capabilities. Yeah. But you have your 30000 in your account that you're not using, yeah. potentially, so for, your, for your accounting services. Yes. So do you understand yes. that the risk is greater for not doing the lease right now as opposed to those extra services that you might not use. And I hear what you're saying. I guess what I'm saying is we currently have used $30,000 worth of that service mm -hmm. and don't have it, are even struggling to find it. And now we're talking about after having made a commitment to them of what their service would be for this next year, taking 30 more thousand of that. As a, if I were the business owner, that's pretty concerning for a town that I'm working with because they have financial issues. You know, so now we're taking the money. Let's so so we don't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's, wait, wait, let's, we, let's, we want to explore another sure. avenue before yeah, okay. we so let's resolve this one. Terry has a question. Yeah. In a way back. I have a question. I have a statement. If we're going to talk about this, you're talking about cutting emergency services. Let's like let's stop right there as a taxpayer, not as a department member or anything else. Our town deserves to be protected by its police, fire, and ambulance. And right now we have two cruisers that need to be replaced, one of which is falling apart. And that's on putting off capital projects and things not getting done maybe correctly or whatever the case may be. If we don't know we're getting free cash, I'm sorry, but everybody's taking a cut across the board and that's the way it should be. And we shouldn't be fooling around with the chance that we might go down to one cruiser and then when there's court on a certain day of the week or two or three days of the week, our town's not protected by the police department because one of our officers has to go to court with that said cruiser right. so or use a personal vehicle which is not appropriate we so i think we should kibosh that conversation of getting rid of not getting replacing our cruisers and be realistic here so thanks carrie daryl so yeah so i what, what what we were talking about is we'd like to hear from john kathy and mike about you know what would potentially be forty eight thousand dollars would be a help to your budget how is it not going to make any difference Well, you're talking about the, what we're under the. Okay, so, so yeah. So, what we're talking if you if you took thirty from the lease or the or the services, and then we took eighteen from the levy limit, that's what forty eight. I think my math is okay. Um, so, and then instead of one hundred sixteen thousand, it would be some something less. So it's it's not restoring you to level, but it's it's helping a little bit. Uh, yes, Kathy and I were just looking at 
what the cuts are and what the school committee did is they really prioritized oh, yeah. the areas that we would want. If, if any money became available, we would put back in. That would make the most impact. So, um, yeah, 30, we're looking at $33,000 to restore. It's yes. At okay. this point, preserve the current programs. Okay. Um, and the rest of the hit on the 116 would come out of a combination of things that we would postpone, which we, you know, they're not okay. uh, impacting current staffing. There would be right. programs that we would not be able to implement. And then we're taking a big cut on areas like supplies, conferences, travels. Um, there is some monies that we put aside for uh, contingency for English language learners. Currently, we don't have any in the district. If that were a change, we would, at that point, have to revisit. So <coughs> looking at that, um, approximately 33,000, to be exact, 32, 328, would allow us to be able to maintain the current programs that we have. And not affect any personnel. And then I will, and that would prevent me from visiting anybody on Friday. Basically. What level was that? Reducing their position. But, but, but. Just over 32,000. That, that, but that would not allow us to expand the computer teacher that we were we, looking we to do. Not, we would not hire a computer teacher at Smith Academy. Um, we would not, you know, we, we were also looking to um, implement a keyboarding program at the elementary Correct. school. We'd be held off on that. And um, we would not have middle school course. Those are the three positions okay. That we had proposed in this budget that would be basically put on hold. Um, the other positions are areas that we would actually be making cuts. Um, one of them is in foreign language. One of them is a paraprofessional position at the elementary school, and the other one is another foreign language position that we would be cutting back. We we look, we prioritized uh, so there, saving so, current programs before. And, and personnel and, and people and people and people and yeah, before supplies and people. conferences and yeah. things like that. Okay. Would be what they would need. Yeah. 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 And at that point, we'd be moving forward. I mean, honestly, there would be a lot of there would not be a lot of supplies to purchase next year, <laughs> uh, and there would be very little professional development for the staff unless we unless we can find grant money, which you know we are always looking for grants. Right. But as far as personnel, that would maintain our level of personnel. And I've got to say, I'm concerned about that. You know, I mean, to hear, especially a school, you know, as reliant on school choice, can have less supplies. You know, it, it seems like that's a significant issue that we should try to address. I mean, I, I doubt the schools already feel like they have too many supplies. You know, I'm sure it's already tight. Uh, so I'm going to make it tighter. Just, I, I just hope we can find another way. But at so, the same token, the vehicle lease was set up to prevent us from kicking the can down the road all the yeah. time. I mean, yeah, yeah. and it's it's sort of yeah. important but this because, is one kick. I mean, it's, it's it's one kick, but it may cause some harm. I, yeah. I, I personally fall. I, I, I feel better about cutting Marlene's um, professional service line. We know we're going to get some... Cash. We're going to get free cash. We're going to get some. We, you know, even if it's next November, we can restore it next November. You right. know, unlike the school, and you know, they can't wait till next. And no. even the vehicle lease can't wait until next November. Right, it's August. Yeah. Go ahead. We took fifteen thousand out of the levy limit, and twenty thousand out of the professional services. That would give us thirty-two thousand. We wouldn't have to because that's laying somebody off is going to cost us anyway. We need yeah, thirty. Right. So, well, okay. Yeah. So I would still take the thirty we, off professional and the eighteen. You know. Well, well that's sort of balances. I agree with the, you. I mean, the, the only issue with that is you, if you leaving the levy limit out there, it'll make no then, sense. Then, to then you have to go appropriate it if if we wind up needing the money for professional services. You know what I mean? Right. Like if you don't, if you take it all out of it. I agree. Yeah. So if you reduce that, you know, if you kind of split it a little more, it gives you more flexibility than if you have to go and get it. Though the program. people, the people, and I'm okay with going less on the levy limit, but the people we paid lots of money to to advise us said you should, if you can, put aside 50000 this year. Leave space oh. for 50000 If you can. Well, we well but we as a you should, right as a you should. 
But there's a the perfect flex world. Flex. There's <laughs> one factor flex. that we know last year they withheld 140000 of free cash. Mm -hmm. We know that's there. Yeah. And if we can get it certified, we know we're going to get that amount. So there's there's another factor, okay? Yeah. Just bringing yeah, it up for food Kathy, for thought. you wanted to say something or are you all I just wanted to make sure that the department does not want to be against any other department. Certainly as no. a citizen, I support the police department and I wouldn't want to... No, this is a cruiser, you know, I we can't keep beating it. All these issues are important. We have yes. to we have to decide Beautiful. what even if it tips the scale the tiniest amount in one direction, what's mo the most important thing? Yes. And Agreed. that's the direction we have to go. Yep. Certainly this is a working conversation, not about uh, pitting anyone against anyone. I mean my concern again with the uh, removing the professional services it's an easy decision to make tonight, you know, because there's no one here sort of representing that. But is it the wisest move when, again, we sort of made a commitment to spend that money? I do feel relatively comfortable with that the free cash is, is going to come, but it's, future that's a, it's an additional, it's not really, I mean, it's an additional town meeting where that needs to get approved. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned about that, though. I think the risk is higher that, it, that something like that doesn't get approved versus something like a vehicle, because again, it's still going to be future services at that point. Right. So, you know, I mean, we're going to be proposing that we put another 30000 after we'll have already passed the town budget with more in professional services than we had ever initially put in a town budget before. And so I just want to put that out there that it is increasing the risk overall, the financial risk, not the medical or health risk or safety risk, the well, financial I think, risk. I, you know, I, I think they're all risks. I mean, when you're cutting budgets and then you're assuming that everybody at the next town meeting is going to understand why we did it and that we now have free cash and we want to restore people's budgets because that's the right thing to do because we've asked them to cut their fiscal year 2018 budget. Never mind what they really were looking for for fiscal year 2019, which is normally what we're talking about at, with the individual departments. I mean, that is what we're talking about, but um, we're not usually talking about a, a budget from two years ago. Right. So having said that, I, I think that the conversations we've been having for the last months, the special town meeting, they know DR, DOR is on board, they know that Bay State's on board. I, I don't think anybody is gonna not wanna pass and have the town continue to be successful in getting over that hump of our financial situation. So I, I hear what you're saying, but I don't have a concern about it. I, I think if we're telling the story, we're upfront about it, we're transparent about it, and we've got to go to town meeting with a level funded budget, and then we're going to restore the funds as free cash gets um, released to us before the end of June, I think people are going to be on board. Um, but I'm interested you know, to hear where you think the 30000 that we owe currently is going to come from, because I think that's going to be a big factor in the discussion. But, Are we actually but that, going to be talking about sixty but, or seventy? Well, so, so to your point, we didn't have the 30 in there last year, because we didn't know we needed it. Yeah. So, you know, it, it is what it is. We're going to have to come up just like any other past budget that have that we've also got, uh, we'll be talking about with free cash. Yeah. And that's where, that's where it's going to come from. And we, and we talked if about we had the free cash now, yeah. that's what we'd be doing with so it. So you're we'd actually be plugging talking these about holes. the same meeting then, essentially. Oh, so yeah, you're we, really, yeah. we're really talking about then. We're having a full-blown town meeting. professional services at a special town meeting where that'll be one, or, one of a few items on, on oh, the, it. Every, gonna, that could everybody's be budget here is going to be on that town meeting. Oh, because you're going we're to doing the whole level thing. funding you, you, everyone back on, too. Well, we're going to have the conversation in advance conversation, of that. conversation, and we talked about this last week, making sure that we have an established priority list of right. what needs yeah. to be taken care of. And, and certainly we, we talked about restoring some budgets. We did talk about, you know, starting the path to restoring stabilization. Right. That's we, important. We have, the, we have fiscal 18 bills. We have 30000 for Bay State. We have 20000 for health insurance. We have 26000 for vocational ed that all need to be restored in this, in, in this current fiscal year. And, and traditionally, those would be on town meeting next week. 
But, but I, there's no money to have that conversation with. Well, I don't That's why we're having the special town meeting in June, most likely. For finance, I don't recall, a con and, and I'm probably missing it, a conversation of an overall budget restoration, because I think what that discussion then would be is how would that work with the levy limit? I mean, if we restore all of these back, uh, these 1% cuts, we're in the exact same situation next year that we're in currently, although we're in a worse place, actually. And 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 what we talked about was a discussion. We didn't okay, say yeah, we right. we never said we're going to automatically do anything. You know, yeah. let's get the money first. Let's talk to departments. We know there are needs out there. We know the school has needs. We know every department across across the board has needs. Marlene's budget. I know the I, is it the IT, IT budget is is pretty underfunded, and so we're going to have to look carefully as to what line items that we collectively right. as a group think should be re and I should say we collectively as a group think should be restored if we have money to do it. Ed? Yeah, Brian, um, one concern that I have and maybe you can answer that question, stabilization was moved to other available funds. Um, what was the stabilization amount? Okay, on the first page it says stabilization fund moved to other Right above the funds. tax rate. Okay, stabilization is a touchy situation. It's a two-thirds vote, as you know. Um, so I don't, this is... Well, we're know, looking at it up on the screen, Ed. When you're voting the budget, uh, I don't, it, it calls for an $84,000 reduction on that line. It was um, C line um, right above the total receipts, Marlene. If you go up, it says stabilization fund, and then it says move to other available funds above. I don't know what that is. Oh, that was that was there. We're not. We don't have anything in there, though. Yeah. Yeah. I think Ed's question is: oh, Did we I move? Did we have to have I think, I think oh, never been here. voted to taken out. You can't just take yeah. out that money. No, it's got to be voted. We didn't take any money. There's the money you already took out. Well, um, that's what I'm asking. What's the balance? That's the money from special town meetings, right? That was um, oh. roughly three. Um, That's the money from the yeah. stable. That's the change. If you go to the fiscal 19, we didn't take any money out of it. You funded last year's budget. Five That's the special town meeting. Well, it, the only thing I'm asking, Sean, is it, yeah. are you trying to take and move stabilization from where it is We're into not a doing different account? No, stabilization. No, no. Okay. We're, We're not doing the, anything. Last year. Well, what's yeah. the stabilization? The line balance? you're looking at is fiscal year 18. Versus 19. Versus it's 19. If you go over to 19, you can see there's no money that's moved out of either, you know, out of that other available. That 508 that's reflected. 508,000. Right. On the front page. Versus 592. And if you look up on the screen, Ed, at the local revenue and funding, that's, this that's 508, 308, the, all these. That's fiscal all year those 19. Funds, no those are funding sources, which yeah. total $508,038. Right. Is your question what is the current balance of the stabilization funds? Pardon? No, no. I, I, think, I, think what, I think what you're trying to say is, is what that stabilization fund is, what that line right there. Looks like the it got moved. Page, yeah. Right, that's so what it looks like. What see, we have this out of here. Stabilization and move no, I, stabilization I, I, is not taking anything on the stabilization, so there's nothing I, there. I okay. think all it's telling you is eighty-four thousand dollars that you took out of stabilization to fund the FY eighteen budget is not funding the FY nineteen budget. Right. So it's got to be some found. I'm just raising the flag in case yeah. there's a problem. Yeah. 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 But We're what is the balance on stabilization? Yeah, there's. Um, Derek, do you have that information? Balance on stabilization. I can send that out Does it, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyone yeah, have a round uh, ballpark? All right. Let's, let's go. All right. Wait, anyone have a ballpark on stabilization? That's a pretty important piece of the conversation, obviously. And we can't really go too far with the budget if we don't know Why? how much. We're, I mean, we're not, are we not doing stabilization. anything with stabilization. We're going to replace some right. it's, in it's, June. In that That's plays into the free ca free cash uh, conversation pre pretty prominently. So I'm saying, is it a? Yeah, I'm I think trying it's to down. Recall. I think each tra uh, stabilization fund is down to about a hundred thousand. Right. That's how we okay. planned it. Because we, we used money at the in special time. So around a hundred thousand right. each. Thank you. Two of them. Yeah. yeah. So. That's right. So Sean Barry, tell me what what you suggested. What? How much? Oh. How much out of? Um, <laughs> Before, before I say that, can I just throw one more thing on the table? Because I, 
I yeah. don't know if it was considered. Yeah. But I think um, just sort of in the vein of the idea of costing us money in the long run situations, like laying somebody off, uh, we Unemployment. didn't. It, the budget doesn't uh, increase library funding, and we understand that that's going to cost us our state matching grant. Eliza's okay with, Eliza with the budget. Okay. I, I, mean, I met so, with Eliza. Yeah, that's yeah. a great question. Yeah. We're yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're okay. Does that mean we're losing free money, though? No. No. Okay. Apparently, it means that we've right because you have to increase requirements. Right. Oh, because it's yeah. based on a number of right. years, yeah. actually. Right. Yeah. We're yeah. Okay. yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Yeah. No. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, so what? What? How did you? How much? You well, have? I think I said. Humana, humana, well, humana. We need thirty-two thousand, right? We need thirty-three. Is that the number? Mm-hmm. Thirty-three. Okay. So, so if you take thirteen thousand. Off, off the levy limit, essentially. Yeah. That leaves you with uh, 45, uh, 35, yeah. 592. And then take uh, 20 from professional it's service. 40,000. Instead of 30. And then you, you're at 33. Okay. And then we're adding 13 to the school. Yours is just taking twenty thousand off. You're only taking oh, 20, 20, not said, thirty. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said to reduce it. Yeah. No. Well, we had talked about it, but yeah. No, just take twenty. Because if you right. take fifteen okay. or uh, thirteen off of a limit levy, add thirteen to the levy. Yeah, and then then add that to this. Yeah. There it now, is. now you're going to add to the school. School. So then you would add thirty-three to the school. Adding thirty three thousand. Yeah. Four three two eight one two six. Plus, you said thirty, right? Thirty three. Thirty three. So that would be four three five one one two six. Four five five ninety two. Four million three sixty one. Is that correct? Is that what you got? Sixty one, two, six, six. Okay. Go back to the front page. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Leaves us at thirty four. So really, you've got sixty. You've got sixty. And yeah, sixty five thousand. You took out a professional. I reduced twenty. Sorry, Sean. So you've got about sixty five thousand dollars for unintended expenses. Why sixty five? You got thirty thousand in finance reserve. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Where's the other thirty? I didn't hear. Finance, finance reserve. reserve. Is that what's in finance reserve? Yeah. Good. Let me check and see what's in finance reserve. Yeah, go check. I think it's probably moved I don't it down think to I really twenty. Touched to that because it says thirty on the budget. I just saw. Oh. Yeah. 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 It's still oh, yeah. thirty. Oops. Yeah. That was what it was at last last budget season. Yep. Reserve fund thirty thousand. I thought it would have been a twenty. Maybe we added extra for professional services or something. Yeah. We did put a little extra just in just in case. Just in case, yeah. And we've spent a little out of that. At the end of the year, we may be able to help. In particular, I know the health insurance is the critical one. We need to find that. I mean, they're all critical, but we need to find that twenty thousand. So. Yeah. Oh. And do we do yeah. we factor in the delay in rate adjustments? The delay in what? Rate adjustments for health insurance. Delay. delay. When's it going to start? Oh, oh. I thought there was a when remote taking to delay. Oh, that's not changing. Just the, the delay contribution. Just the deduction, just not the, the actual rate of the health insurance. Okay, so it. So uh, that we, we, as a town, do not see any. Right. Change on that on the health insurance side of things. The employee will see a change, but not the, the town. Yeah. The raise is going to increase. Right, but the, the employee essentially what is the employee contribution? Yeah. So why not take twenty thousand yeah. from finance right. reserve, leave professional services alone, and leave ten thousand and that I just think it doesn't make sense to, to well, change if, professional if services. You need it or any day. Can move if you it, need we need it, it later. Need from the reserve services. to professional yeah. services if we needed to. Mm -hmm. We'll be okay. With and if you needed it somewhere time. else, then you, you'd have the flexibility to do that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem is what we're art essentially doing, which is artificial, is we're saying 
we're meeting the fifty thousand dollar goal that the accountant that we're paying lots of money to suggested when in reality we're not because we know we have an additional obligation uh -huh. and so you know, I just wish right. that was the one sort of benchmark that they gave us they said leave fifty thousand dollars a very reasonable thing so for us not to hit that is a I, well I think it's reasonable if you're yeah. not cutting one percent right. or two percent budgets across the board they but didn't if, say if in a perfect world I think that's what they meant if everything's paid for everybody's got what they want leave fifty thousand in it well they don't the just blow who, it they're the but, ones going through our books so I don't think they were thinking about in a perfect world I think they were thinking about in the situation that our books actually are in at the time we did this they weren't going through the fiscal at year at the time they said budget. fifty thousand yes they were they're basing it on fiscal year 18. You're basing it on f fiscal no, year 18? They no, they were. Which we don't so have any numbers on, really. And so, if anything, we should be particularly conservative, one would argue. Okay. I you think know, this is... They said 50, we got 36. I think is, that's pretty good, given the circumstances. Okay. This is as conservative a budget as I can ever remember being part of. I mean, I don't ever remember... Even at thirty-four thousand, I don't ever remember leaving thirty-four thousand dollars in the levy limit. Certainly not when you're cutting budgets. Right? No, mm -hmm. no, no. It's We've left money in the levy limit before, but not not simultaneous to cutting. Right, right. Across the board. Right. Probably not. Never five digits. All right. So how do we? Um, so I would assume. That are you guys. Is there more? Are you guys um, ready to vote on this? Are you ready to vote? They need to vote about I, Oh, I know they do. I mean, there, right. there's no other discussion right. further. Any I mean, other, we, any other we're kind of working off this first at? page. You're of, comfortable with this? Uh, yeah. 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 As it sounds like. Comfortable okay. as we can. Okay, be. hold it. Okay. There's one other thing. <laughs> oh. Sorry. One of the articles coming up oh, you're right. is, <clears throat> I can't remember, the article to establish the, what, 350th. So... At last week's meeting, we decided we decided not to support it because we didn't have the money. You know, not because we were opposed to it or anything like that. The problem is they are going to be starting to raise money. They need a kicker in. They need something in the account so they can start receiving money. Am I explaining that right, Bobby? Correct. So it's too late to change it. But if we even put a hundred dollars into it. It would establish the account. They could they could start to go to work, you know. And again, hopefully, we get free cash, and we give them the twenty five, you know, the twenty five thousand that they were looking for. Put but a dollar in it. You know, ten dollars, hundred dollars. So how would we make that change? Amend on the floor. We can amend it on town floor, and it would cut our budget by our levy limit by a hundred dollars. I'm already made that amendment. Yeah, I mean, I, that's, you know, because, you know. We just explained the reason why. I right. mean, it, this is, you know, no one's pulling a fast one. This is something that needs to be done to, right. to, to get through we'll town meeting, to get you guys what you need to establish the account. Because otherwise right. we can't break Start can't collecting, funds in. collecting. Right, right, right. 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 Derek, no, just to, so anyway, the, when you look at the um, finance summary articles here, yeah, um, twenty-five thousand is plugged in here from taxation, so that is already calculated here. In, this in the budget, budget workbook, right? For the warrant, the finance committee was not recommending it because we didn't, you know, we just. But it's plugged into but there. It, it is plugged in to come from taxation. It is. Yes, it is. So we have another twenty-five. Right here. 000. So that's twenty-five thousand dollars that. Really? Right. Well, we were talking about ways to still, still, you know, reduce. So the just levy. for the fun of it, take that twenty-five thousand dollars out. Okay. Just for nine hundred. Just twenty-four nine. No, no, yeah. Take out twenty-four nine. Right. Yeah, twenty-four nine. See what that does. What? Make it take, take out or make that a hundred. However you have to do it. A hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, probably that side more importantly. And then go to the go to the levy limit. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. There you have your fifty thousand. Bingo. go. <laughs> 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 what you would need to do is um, the finance committee does recommend that. 
Right. What it's saying. Yes. How did we miss that? I don't know. It was on taxation. I thought that, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that, well we, I thought you're still, you I wanted to still, know you it was, still wanted because to it was an article. That. That's why right. we didn't it's assume an article. it was in there. So yeah. we have to have the articles yeah. there. That's why we didn't assume um, it was in there as taxation. Right. There's no That's other, now the article for CPC is not in there. That's not coming out of, let's make CPC sure. CPC is, so let's go through this real yeah. quick. So we have chapter 90, ambulance will be coming from, that's no, prior no, year no. bill. No, no, the article. Right. Which, which is, no, this one. no, the 46,000, article 2. To replenish. I did not fund that okay. in here. Uh, right. I did not fund okay. that. We're gonna put because we had talked about holding off on that for a while, so I did not fund that. So we just, yeah, we just have some prior bills and then the community okay. preservation articles. That's well, it. Putting it back in production. So, okay, guys, let's so, hold on. Let's tune it back in. Please. So, yeah. we could, to Go Sean's ahead, point, it. we <laughs> could put instead of being at fifty nine thousand, we could put put some of that money back into professional services, mm -hmm. right? I put all of it back. So we we, we restore the twenty thousand. You don't need to be at fifty nine. Take the thirty. No, we don't from need the levy to. limit, and then based on your math of using the finance reserve to balance out the fifty, then we're there, right? I mean, you got the finance reserve thirty, and if so, if you take that no. thirty three just from that, or wasn't there another eighteen somewhere? Yeah, no. So the thirty three from the levy limit. Let's we're at okay, the 60 okay. If you're including finance. All reserve. right. So what we're what we're talking about is putting. 20,000 back, back into professional that. Services. Into yeah. professional services. Okay. Okay. I'm stopping there. So the levy limit still going to be up the additional $4,900 from um, 30, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. So it'll, be, it'll be around 40000 or whatever it is. Right. Does 39. that leave 10000 Did you do it? Yes, I did. Or was it 20 total? It was that was 20. 20. Cool. That's That's 20 was added cut. 20 back to so you're, so now you're back we're up at to 70. You're back up to now we're at 39. Perfect. Could have saved a lot of conversation, huh? <laughs> if the numbers had been right from the No, they are right. It's just we didn't no. know that. No, yeah. Okay. Why, well, that was easy. <laughs> well, yeah. A couple hundred thousand more will be all set. What does the Warren article say? Warren article says 25,000. They'll, they'll have to amend it so on the floor. It'll be amended on the floor right away. Yep. Right. That, um, that could be the only downside. There's, this, this doesn't have to do well two things I want to talk about one is the 26,000 that's article 2 for CPC I had a 46,000 thank you I had a conversation with Bob Wagner and Derek you can probably help me with this discussion so essentially what happened there was some years ago a former accountant got a bill for one of the town hall projects. I'm not sure which which one. He didn't have enough money to pay the bill, so he took it out of CPC, which not really supposed to do. So technically, the town owns owes CPC the forty-six thousand. I talked to Bob about it. I said, Bob, it. You know, because we had voted not to do this, and I said it's not personal. It's we don't have the money to do it. Once we have money to do it, we we can get it back. And so, I just want to point that out to everybody. Um, he he was concerned. He wanted he he wanted to, he thought it was a good idea to at least leave the article there. So that townspeople see it, and maybe this is something that we can explain again next week. That I think we should certainly pay it back when we have the money to pay yep. it back. But um, you know, anyway, Does that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. And and the other thing is fire department. No ambulance. So we. <laughs> Because of transfers that have happened in the past how many years? Four years. That 
money fell instead of going from ambulance reserve no it went from ambulance revenue it at the end of the year it should have fallen to back to the ambulance That's right ambulance uh, surplus ambulance surplus fund instead it went to free cash so there's about forty thousand dollars is that it work the, the numbers out there was um Justin and I had this conversation. We, had to, we spoke with um, the, uh, the DLS, the legal services, and there's a specific formula on how we can do that, and it's based upon what you're funding out of that, whether it's 100% or... Yeah. Um, so I'm working with the chief, and, and we'll figure those numbers out. So, but it's somewhere in that $40,000 range... Could be. Could ...that be, yeah. we should, we, the town, sh we, you know, should put right. back into that because then it will help next year yeah. in Stephen's budgeting process because he'll have enough money in the reserve to, because <coughs> the ambulance is really self-sufficient and this just makes sure that we continue to be self-sufficient. This is just a timing difference just to get us caught up. It's just when we appropriate the money. Right. The ambulance service certainly brings enough money to, to um, self-support itself. It's just a matter of when we take the vote, right. we just don't have the full year's worth of revenues. But if we get the 40000 put in, then... That'll get us over the hump. That'll get us over the hump, then we'll be in a good spot. Correct. So that's just another thing. I know we're loading a lot of things on, on the proverbial free cash, but I yeah. wanted to bring that up. Do we have a running list yet? I mean, because it, it yep. is a lot of things. Yep. Tonight I've got 25... I've got 40. You gotta say what it's for, Sean. 25 for the uh, annual uh, 350th. Yeah. The 40 for fire. And then and what else? Ambulance. Ambulance. Uh, ambulance. 46 for CPA. 46 for CPA or 14 for C? 46. 46. 46. 46. 46. 46. I think that's water under the bridge, right? I mean, didn't we talk about that at the last meeting? That they very much want their money back. Okay. Oh. We yeah. are, we, we, and, and, and it's really, it, it it it's proper accounting. All right, so we're at a no nope, 111. <coughs> There's 47 for Phil's I and I. 47, okay, for Phil. Yeah. It's required. Oh, Otherwise, we have the past. We have the past year today. bills that need to be taken care of. So we're at 158 right there. Okay. 20 20 thousand for the health insurance. Health insurance. 26 thousand for Voced so and the 30 for, for Bay State. And 44. There's 210. Oh. We hoped for free cash. It's just like, you know, yeah. layer number one. Piece. And 44000 yeah. for Jaws of Life. Yeah. So you now have the running list. <laughs> okay. About 250 Well, though, that yeah. list is not really... Yeah, some of that list is one. things we have to do, and right. some of these things right. we don't have to do. No, well, they're, they're all pretty much things that we... We want to do. Committed yeah. to. Uh, yeah. uh, 278000 actually, is, is that number. Okay. So hopefully this free cash really, really turns out. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot of money. Yeah, Ed. Brian, uh, Article 21, the 32094 for the trails, it says that we're going to either uh, raise an appropriate transfer or borrow. Um, this is reimbursable by the state, is that correct? It is. Right. Yes. So do we know when that money's coming back to us? This year, is my understanding. That would come back once all the invoices have once been submitted. So we have to pay paid. the invoices. Because yeah, that'll give we us another 32000 no, Pack well, we pay. We have to we pay have to it pay first, and then it comes back. back. This, yeah, and this will be to break a loan. Even. It's what a do short they call term, that, Edwina? Short term grant loan. anticipation loan. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so the only thing ultimately that it might cost the town is the some interest. interest right. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, it should be a swap. Right. But I mean, is the thirty-two thousand in here? No. In our budget, no. No, no because it's a loan. The no, loans loan. always take. Right. Don't come in. Really don't come in effect until the following year, until okay. 2020. That, that's true. Right. Okay. The total project cost is 40562 The 32094 is a grant, and then the town has a, a, an in-kind match of 20%. That's $8,468. I have the calculation. So that will be provided by, that in-kind match will be provided by uh, man hours from the Open Space Committee. Finance committee. Are you, you all ready? set with that, Ed? Are you, are you guys ready to vote on a, on this budget? Yeah. yeah. Last question. Do we have any indication yet from DOR on on what free cash may be available no. this summer? No indication whatsoever. No. I had a conversation with Justin 
well that was oh. just that we might get it that we that that we may, that we may get it but yeah, Justin is working on schedule A he did seem fairly confident by the second or third week that the auditors will be in here of May of May mm -hmm. c correct and that yeah still feel fairly confident on draft financials by the second week in June should be sufficient for submitted free cash you know so long as the auditors do their thing then you know there's a possibility that we can have it by the end of the year but you know fiscal there's also year. a possibility year. that fiscal we end of June end of June yeah. there's also a possibility that we won't but and if we don't what does that mean the wait till the fall that list we if we don't we have to wait until 18 is yeah that would be the end of is in the books right so, right, Derek. So, right. once things get going as they should normally go, mm -hmm. by October first, the previous fiscal year should be put to the general ledger. Mm -hmm. We should have filed Schedule A, and we should be bringing the auditors in. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, Schedule A is due on November first. So, right. Yeah. But it's due it's, November first. You know, right around the holidays. So by winter. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. We're closed down. Right. We should set a schedule ahead of time for ourselves. Right. And I mean, we're pushing for June. Pushing obviously, for June other than any roadblocks that may or Because otherwise, I mean, we do owe a thirty thousand dollar bill to Bay State that I assume they're going to want before November. Um, Probably. You know. Well, so. Still doing a lot of no. business. Oh, this, oh, so. yeah. That. It's a little yeah. game we play. If you find it, you can have it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and don't forget <laughs> at the at the end of the year. You know, there may be some mm -hmm. money that we can transfer. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but again, that will be a we'll have to pri prioritize. I know, health insurance is, it, it is not going to not no. not going to wait. No. So, any other questions about this budget? Does somebody want to make a motion? I will. Okay. So I make a motion that we accept that budget right. that includes a 1% reduction across the, no, not quite, that includes a 1% reduction for many departments, something less than 1% for the school department, mm -hmm. and 2% mm -hmm. from DPW. From DPW. Is there a second? I second. Any more discussion on this? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries. Great. We have a budget. Want us okay. to do the same thing, Marlon? Yes, we certainly can. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the budget as amended tonight. I'll second the motion. Motion and I... made and seconded. Any further discussion? I just want to say thank you to everybody. It's been a long, hard process, and I know there's still a lot of work ahead. So, it's not easy uh, either. It's not easy. It's not easy. Thanks. Okay. That's all right. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, and I, I concur. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. So, we've got the budget ready to roll forward for town meeting. Uh, at this point, I was going to. Marlene, are you all set with the budget wise? Can, can I, I bring oh, up sorry. one other yeah, yeah. thing? I was just going to start going through the articles. Oh, okay. But if you wanted to jump no, ahead. Go. No, no, that's okay. We'll start. But I did have a discussion with Marlene today about <coughs> last week at our meeting, the CPC articles. We didn't make a recommendation. Technically, they're a financial... They're... Um arm of the town and I feel like we should make a recommendation for, for that and so it's hard to do though yeah well the nice thing about CPC mm -hmm. is they've got the money we're not we, you know right so it's their and, money. And really as the finance well, committee whether money. we individually like or don't like their, the choices. Pro their choices right and I you know it's yeah, a matter. That's, really that's not kind of really the question. No. I mean, the question is, do they? I mean, they, they're as 
they're, financially they're support. They're independent in terms of making decisions about mm -hmm. what they do. Right. The question kind of more is, does it have some negative impact? I mean, they could potentially do yeah. things that could have a negative impact on the town in the future. Well, or in, you know, yeah, going forward kinds of ways. And we, we had talked about, like, the Smith Academy Park that's right. being built right now right. will take some maintenance from the town going forward, which will ultimately have an impact on our on future budgets, on Phil's budget. So, right? Yeah. yeah, well, I guess, yeah, I guess whether you think that's negative or positive is yeah. neither here nor there will have an impact in some way or another, yeah. and that's... Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, and I, I have no problems with the projects that are going on this year, but anyway, no. if you want to go through... Yeah, well, I thought I would go through, um, because I had told the townspeople at our last televised meeting I would, so I sort of feel <laughs> obligated. Um, of course, the, the, this is on the website, right, Marlene? Yes, Should anybody want to look? Mm -hmm. um, thank you to you and Pete for getting that up there. And uh, I think, did you say there were copies in town hall as well, or, or no? Um, there were some copies. Or in around town, Mike had to post some, I think. Just, yes. Okay. Post. There's just going to be a replay of you reading through the Yeah, I know. Article. I know. All right. Here we go. So, um, town meeting is next Tuesday, May 8th at 7 o'clock at Smith Academy. Uh, we hope everybody is there, is informed, or has a understanding of what we've been going through from a financial perspective, and now we'll go through the articles and and uh, have an idea what we'll be discussing. So um, Article 1 is about is submitted by uh, the town clerk, and it's, it's about the elections that we do every year. Uh, that's Article 1. Question 1, um, which will is, um, shall the town vote to have its elected town treasurer and town collector become an appointed town treasurer slash collector of the town of Hatfield. So that question is going to be on the ballot on May 15th, as well as we're going to be discussing it at town meetings. So and it's got to pass both. Is the Finance Committee supposed to comment on, on the warrant? I, I, you, I mean, you I now or at that night, you mean? No, I mean, or just in general? Yeah, oh, you can make comments. I, tonight? No, I'm sorry. That's okay. Sorry. Um, she comes up again later, Betsy, in the. Yeah. That, that, this is just a recitation of what's going to be at the town election. Yeah. Right. Okay. So later on, there's another I, Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, this kind of article. goes to Article 1 yeah. because it's about the town elect. Thank you, Lydia, for clarifying. And I think you almost weren't here tonight. <laughs> uh, article 2 uh, asked, and we just had this conversation, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate um, transfer $46,000. Uh, this is the replacement money Daryl alluded to um, that was... Uh, taken out of um, CPA funds or CPC funds inadvertently and, and use on a, a, a town side or a town expense and really that money should be returned to them. Um, are, did we really didn't discuss if we're going to be tabling these that night um, or are we waiting to see how the I, conversation goes? I or, would. Right? Because we're not, I we don't have the funding. I think it would be this. appropriate to table it. but. I, I would like to be able to do yep. it in such a fashion so that we could at least explain our position on it. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair. Because I don't, you know, well, I don't at we, least I don't think we deny that they need to get the money back. We just don't have the money to give mm -hmm. them back. So f I think procedurally, yeah. though, so maybe the idea is we make, uh, have the discussion before we make a motion. It, once it's tabled, the, the discussions that you yeah, can't discuss it. So, um, I, and, but I agree with you. We should be able to explain it. So maybe Joe, give us a little uh, wiggle room as far as way. reading it and saying, "Here's what this is all about," or something before actually one of us making the motion. Right. We like mm -hmm. to discuss Article Two mm -hmm. and not do it in the form of a motion. I mean, you could could the selectman could make a motion and second it, and then we could discuss it. Theoretically, and then the moderator could recognize somebody, maybe on the finance committee or someone else, to table for a motion to table it. It's not really town discussion. You're true. Yeah. We're trying to explain and why you're, this is you're here. You're explaining it, and you're going to say something like, um, "We're we're going to we're proposing to table Article Two because," and then explain Explain it okay. before you even make a motion. You're, right. It's more of an announcement, yep. not okay. a discussion. A discussion right. is 
the people that yeah, yeah. are there at town meeting, yes, we are all citizens and have a right to get up off of our seats and go down and... Yep, so, so along, I agree. So along those yeah. lines, let's just say somebody did want to ask follow-up questions. What, you have to bring them, we have to bring the article forward. So they, so that, but so we just have to be in sync. You know, we, we all just yeah. want to treat the, yeah. respectfully treat um, yeah. the residents uh, the way they should be treated. But we, we, you know, so we want to have that conversation, Lydia. I just don't want all of a sudden that night somebody gets all ticked off if they're unable to speak to the comments I or Ed makes or whoever, whoever talks to this. You know what I mean? Because it's really not a discussion back and forth thing because a motion was never made and it was never brought brought forward. Did I say that right? Yeah, but yeah. But okay. Or, or you as long as you, as long as or you, you just open it up for the discussion and let, you know. Well, Can we've, I just had, just we've had articles in the past that have been open and second and had long discussion about, and then we table it. Right. Okay. So That's just a thought, usually at the beginning of town meeting, there's opening remarks or comments yeah, from the finance committee, somebody from the finance committee yeah. speaks. Yeah. That might be your opportunity to right. just, you idea. know, um, state, you articles, reference yeah. that Two, three, article, nine, whatever. and that while, you oh. know, there is a, you know, we'll be tabling it, that, you know, you do actually support funding yeah. that at, at some okay. point. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea, Marty. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, article three is about uh, accepting any money that people will give us, grants, gifts, awards, public, <laughs> private. Um, uh, Article 4 is from the town treasurer, same, enter into uh, agreements for fiscal year, you know, general law stuff, normal uh, type things. Article 5 is the uh, chapter 90. Article 6, uh, so here's, um, I think, Betsy, to your point. So Article 6, yes, thank th that you the town will actually, the, the town member, uh, town residents will vote on this. This is the actual article. Uh, to see if the town will vote to have its elected town treasurer and town collector become an appointed town treasurer collector, one person, one position, basically, of the town of Hatfield pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30, excuse me, Mass General Law 41, um, subject to acceptance by an official ballot question. So it's a, it's a twofer. Got to pass the town meeting, got to pass at the ballot a week later. Mm -hmm. Is there already a question on the ballot for this year, Vlad? Yes. yes. Yeah. So each of the question, or question, Article 1 and this article each have a ballot question on top of no, one Article 1 no. talks about all the elected officials, in none in particular. Sorry, question 1. And sorry. then question 1 is, is so what's going to be at the ballot? It, yes, correct. And Article exactly 6 is, same yeah. And Article 6 is to is take it from put it together. to appointed. Correct. They're okay. both exactly the same. If it fails, yeah. oh, then it goes, then the ballot doesn't. Doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. I, Correct. They both have to well, you yeah. have to go then. You'd have to, have to, you have to go back, back and have another meeting. Right. And if you didn't have one in June, right. 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 you'd be able to do you it. You could get another shot but at it. But either way, it has to pass a both ways. It has to pass a both. Correct. Um Article 7, and see if the town will vote to have the selectmen appoint a town government study committee to explore the structure of the chief elected officers of the town to increase its current three-member board to, its, to a five-member board. A lot of that has to do with um, the open meeting laws as they're out now. Um, you know, anytime two of us are bumping to each other in a store, a restaurant, uh, wherever, um, it, it can be perceived as violating the open meeting law because two out of the three makes up a majority. And so um, that, that, for me, that's one of the reasons I proposed it, uh, as well as I think with a five-member board, when two members could be with one another, I think we could do a lot of legwork on some of these different topics and subjects that we have uh, day in and day out and not have to fear uh, and I'm, still, sort of and I'm still struggling with it because you can't get three people to decide. I can get five, but what will, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but at least we can discuss it with one another. <laughs> we, oh, right. <laughs> exactly. So, that, you know, and if people have questions, I can certainly uh, answer them that evening. So, so that question is simply should we look into increasing the number from three to five. It's not to increase it from three to five at this point. It's, let's do the study and see if the townspeople want to move that way. And, and you're talking about just the appearance. Yeah, believe, yeah, just the appearance, I right? Believe, right, because I believe even just, it, you're, you're not even supposed to do like an email no, and give nothing. your opinion. It, it's impossible. Right. It, it so is very difficult for, for those. 
even two of you on a five-member board couldn't you, be discussing issues. It, 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 right. it ties your hands, and it, it's no, because if you want to follow the rules, it, right. it ties your hands to not be able to have a conversation with a fellow board member. About I mean, something it's else. About, uh, yeah. 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 Um, but even to be able to, to have a conversation about something that, you two know. Two of us on a five-member board you know, can have a conversation. Right. Yeah. Two out of five can. Two out of five, because mm -hmm. you can't make any decisions. Two out of three. Then what's the whole thing about the emails and you're not even supposed you to give can't. your opinion? Right, you can't well, on an can't email. Deliberate. Hey, you can't yeah, deliberate. Right. deliberate. But two of you would be deliberating in a conversation somewhere. Right. So. Yeah. I know. I don't know. Yeah. So I think it's illegal. No. Yeah. Well, you I, I don't, yeah. Other than the appearance, I don't think you're solving anything with a five-member board. Wait. Sure you are, because now Ed and I, if there's five of us, we could have a conversation. That's what she's debating. Oh, yeah, no. Because we're not deliberating as a majority. And you could have subcommittees to do as long the, as the school committee does it, has five. The planning board has five. Everybody has five, except for... As long as, you, as long as Ed doesn't go to the other person... Cor correct. You're right. Talks. I, two, I, I mean, it leads to a problem. It could be a potential problem. But on the flip side, then when there's five of you, five people or four people are making a decision right now when you're missing a member, two people are making a decision for the whole town in the meeting or whatever you choose to move forward with. Right. At least with five people, if one person's missing, four people yeah. make a decision or even if there's three of you, three is better than, I, I mean, to me, having two people, and nothing against anybody that's on any of the committees, but five yeah. in the finance committee part of it too or the school committee makes sense for what kind of big decisions you guys are really talking about yeah. and making. Well, and you can, you truly can have more impact when we do it on the schools. We have, we call them task force or subcommittees, yeah. but that, that's how you do a lot of the legwork on different topics. And then, you know, you can bring it back to a full committee right. and you can work together. It, and, you know, let's be honest, over the last couple of years, um, and it could affect any particular um, committee, but it affected the board of selectmen twice over the last couple of years mm -hmm. where somebody became ill. Mm -hmm. and, and so okay. now you're right. It was just two people. And yeah, even two out of three is a majority. But two of those people became ill, so you were trying to replace one, and then you had to yeah, replace that the did, one so I, I mean, you can't plan for everything, but you can try to plan for something. That's so the that's the reason for that. Uh, article 8, we talked about, so I'll just, I guess I'll read the amended uh, article as we're going to do it. So to see if the town vote to establish an anniversary special fund for the town's 350th anniversary and to appropriate transfer the sum of $100 for the purpose of implementation uh, of the 350th anniversary in the year so they can get their um, fine, uh, checkbooks and, and accounts established. Um, and then we'll, the other revenue, the other uh, amounts we'll talk about later in, in June hopefully okay article 9 to see if the town will vote to amend the town of Hatfield bylaws by adding a new section 2.14 to article 2 general police regulations as follows regarding political and or campaign <coughs> signs section 2.14 no person shall erect maintain or display any political and or campaign signs on town property other than on routes 5 and 10 political and or campaign signs erected maintained or displayed on personal property shall be at a distance from the road sufficient enough so as to not impair driver sight lines at intersections political and or campaign signs erected on personal property along routes 5 and 10 must be outside of the state road taking uh, taking or take any other action there too. So is the idea really is we don't want people just putting signs wherever they want to on public property, right? And, and part of the problem with that, by the way, is um, I know there's going to be some discussion that evening. There's already been some. But a lot of it has to do with not just political signs, but other signs for different causes. People don't go up af out afterwards and pick them up. So they're there forever. And Phil's guys are trying to cut lawns and do whatever. So that's the... That's the Just deal. Trying to figure out what the state road taking actually is. Yeah. Well, I I, I was getting a little confused there myself, so I just kept going. Well, yeah, that's a, <laughs> They took different things at different times. And Lydia wants to pipe. Uh, well, and, and there, there, as I was pulling out of my driveway tonight, there is a sign that you 
it, your line of sight as you're looking up the road uh, awful. is is not great. Once you pull out a little further, it's okay, but it could cause you to miss, and I may move that sign. I mean, all those signs are a problem. It's not my neighbors. Well, that's the OT will also take the signs. They did that last mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Well, on yeah. the yeah. side, well, five and ten, they'll take your right. signs right off the property. Right. It won't matter. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> So basically what we're saying is have it on private property for the most part and get permission. And then after your event or your election or your campaign, take, take your sign home. All right. And I think the argument that Lydia used before was the fact that when you, you, you came up with that, if you have to put a sign, you have to get permission from the people's property. Right. Where, so if you put a sign in town property, where do you get permission? With the day of election, since we can put signs outside the parameter on town property here, normally on the day of right, elections, right. could you yeah, use yeah. the town common like people have in the past? I mean, I did when I ran, but that was before this article. I get why the article's being made, but right. is that then mm -hmm. excluded that, you know what I'm saying? I, town, I would say yes. Yes, I would, it would I only would, be around the town hall. When there's an election, you know. Just where it normally right. happens at the town hall. Right. That makes yeah. sense. I, mean, I just wasn't there's sure. There's other towns that don't even allow it. You know you, you can't plant a sign. At a lot of towns, really? you have to be holding your sign. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, so, so, just at the town hall, just hold it. It makes sense. Yeah. Sorry. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks, Lydia. All right, Article 10 to see if the town will vote to amend the Town of Hatfield bylaws by adding a new article to establish and authorize revolving funds for use by certain town departments, boards, committees, agencies, and officers under the Mass General Laws. Um, so, then it talks about Article 16. The, what, well, because what? it'll be Article 16 in the town bylaws. Oh, okay. So the motion, I, I've already prepared the motion. So okay, so, article 16. so this is to establish some revolving accounts for particular departments, um, and this is based on recommendation from the State Department of Revenue, DOR, is that correct? Yes, they, they require that revolving, department revolving funds, which we do have, and we vote right. annually must be a bylaw. Right, so just to eliminate or alleviate any confusion, um, we actually did um, roll some revolving funds in last year into regular budgets, correct? This, this is separate from that. This, we right. still have revolving yeah. accounts and this is the article you right. need to. Are you talking to, about the inspections? Yes, yes. yeah. We, we I, I, in case people those. are saying, what do they do when they we just... We eliminate the revolving fund. We have a DPW uh, motor grader. Right. We've added the community gardens. Yep and uh, hazardous materials. Okay, so, so we're not establishing new funds. We're, we're giving a, by, a town bylaw to, to the revolving funds that exist. Correct. And the other revolving funds from the inspection services were, were um, eliminated. Were dissolved, yeah. dissolved last. Yeah. Okay, just, yeah, so oh, good word. All right, Article 11 from the Planning Board. Um, cannabis. To see if the town will vote to amend the town of Hatfield zoning bylaws by adding the following. And we've got, um, I'm going to hit the highlights, but this is basically a three or four page um, recommendation from the planning board regarding uh, marijuana distribution, growth, cultivation, um, establishment, all, all sorts of things. So um, Marlene was kind enough to... Uh, get together um, with me a little earlier and, and highlight some things that I just thought um, the people should know in advance. So basically, the, and the planning board, uh, thank you very much. They've put a lot of time and effort into getting this right, and especially with the state changing laws and regulations over the last couple of years. So um, also thanks to the fire chief, police chief, and Superintendent Roberts and, and many others who had input with the planning board when, when these were uh, developed. So um, we had all the players as part of it. Oh, thanks. So the planning board meetings are on YouTube, you mean? Yeah, thank you, John. Yeah, so people can get caught up that way, too. All right, so marijuana establishment. So the purpose. The purpose of this section is to regulate the time, place, and manner of marijuana establishments as necessary to protect the public health and safety and in the manner consistent with the character of this community and not unreasonably impracticable. Um, so, uh, so the scope relates to marijuana establishments authorized by general laws and not to medical marijuana treatment centers. Those, those are separate uh, or different. Um, 
that's not what these laws that we'll be talking about. So uh, the definitions are about cannabis and marijuana, um, product manufacturer and establishment, et cetera, retailer. So it just gives a definition of each of those uh, categories. Uh, the siting of marijuana establishments and parking requirements. So if it's a marijuana independent testing laboratory, and basically I believe this is the same for each of these different categories. The, mm -hmm. the response I'm about to give is the same for everything. So may be located only in such zoning districts subject to such standards and conditions, including special permit and or site plan approval as is required by these bylaws. So that's the same if it's a testing laboratory, a product manufacturer, a retailer, um, they all have to um, have the special permit and site plan approval. Correct? I got that one? Yes. Okay. Other standards and conditions, no marijuana retailer shall be located within 300 feet of any pre-existing residential use. No marijuana establishment shall be located within 500 feet of any pre-existing public or private school or pre-existing licensed chair, excuse me, licensed child care facility or any other pre-existing use in which children commonly congregate in an organized, ongoing, formal basis. I know um, the chiefs and the superintendents um, you had a lot of conversation with the, uh, with the planning board on that. No more than two marijuana retailers shall be located in town at any one time. And marijuana establishment operations shall conform at all times to general laws, chapter 94G, and regulations issued there under. And no public event shall take place at any marijuana establishment. So and there's many others in here, but those are the highlights. I would remind people, as um, Bob Wagner and the planning committee have done, that the town of Hatfield, when the vote initially came out, um, did in fact have the majority to, um, to support uh, marijuana in the state of Massachusetts. So um, just for what that's worth, people should, be, should remember that. Um, so that's it about marijuana. Bob, I'm sure planning board will be available to answer any particular questions anybody might have on that. Um, and then Article 12 along those lines to see if the town will vote to amend Hatfield zoning bylaws by adding the, adding the following section 3.0 use regulations and a lot of it has to do with agricultural uses and it's about marijuana, the retail uses. It pretty much is the, um, it's the article um, adding the regulations for what I just went over on, on the previous article that the planning board uh, went through. Article 13 is to see if the town will uh, put a 3% tax on the um, marijuana, which local sales tax, and we, yes, we will. Well, hopefully. <laughs> Lydia. Right, just on a uh, side line, Marlene, I don't know if you've gotten a few of these calls. I've gotten about three, maybe four calls, people calling, asking what the town's position is on cannabis sales, and I said, well, we're having a meeting on the 8th, and, mm. you know, I haven't received any calls. Oh really? You know, I've got, yeah, I've got about three or four, and one guy in particular today is going to be is from Hatfield. I think he's going to come to town meeting. He's not registered to vote, so he's going to have to sit in the special place. Well, he can listen. He can listen. So there are there are people calling. Yeah, no, well that's that's good. Yeah, so that's good. Well, and I would I would suggest that. Uh, important to have something in place. Have something in place. I I would suggest that the planning board. Um, again with all the um, work and effort they put into this should be able to I would imagine answer any any and all or certainly most of the questions that might come up on on this topic Carrie yeah so there's going to be guidelines that's going to come from the Board of Health too that we haven't we haven't really gotten a discussion because we're waiting for the state to see how this yeah. we're waiting for this and the state has their laws and stuff and we probably won't defer or I don't see us deferring from anything that the state yeah. is going to suggest as the laws Mm -hmm. But there's also that point of view that the Board of Health has to approve on top of this. Right. right. Just right. like the tobacco regulations sure. that are in town, too. It's the yeah. same thing that falls under the Board of Health, and then we come to the selectmen with it as our recommendation. Great. Thank you. Uh, Article 14, uh, we talked a little bit about this with our um, discussions with finance. Uh, we've got a couple of um, bills um, from previous fiscal years. That, uh, on, you know, um, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate uh, the sum of $1,100 for paying a prior bill for the ambulance department. 
Article 15 to see if the town will appropriate $748 prior year for the town collector. And uh, Article 16, uh, raise transfer $86.50 for the purpose of paying the uh, a DPW um, a bill. Um, now we have community preservation articles, CPA or CPC. Um, so Article 17 is the usual transferring money um, for their estimated revenues for historic commu uh, reserve community housing, open space, and budgeted. Uh, that's pretty standard. I don't know if the amounts are, might be a little different. Article 18. Uh, sorry. Do we want to make a motion to recommend that? Article 18, or Article 17? Yeah, well, as we go through these. Uh, we, we did the recommendations last week, but I guess uh, you want to do the CPA ones yeah. that we had skipped. Yeah. 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 So I, I would make a motion to find somebody to recommend this article. Which one? 17? 17. Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Sure. Aye. Aye. Article 18 to see if the town will vote to appropriate transfer from CP uh, Community Preservation uh, the sum of $96,400 to contribute to the cost to create an athletic field at Smith Academy. Um, the balance of uh, whatever the balance is of that project will be paid for out of school choice. Um, Article 19 to see if the town will vote to appropriate transfer from community preservation $5,000 to help with the community gardens on Billings Way. Article 20, uh, see if the town will appropriate transfer $15,000 um, for the uh, rehabilitation removal of invasive species on town owned or controlled parcels. Um, yeah, and uh, Hatfield Open Space would, um, would be in charge of that, right? Under the or, Parcels that are under the Hatfield Open Space Committee. Right. Do right. you know what, what that invasive species is? Or what, I, I've gotten a couple of questions about what, what are they talking about? I mean, have to I defer that yes, to open it's space. Things, it's, it's things like uh, Norway maples, it's Japanese barberries, uh, they're very bitter species. Uh, they're just bitter all sweet. invasive species that were imported here and Take over. So it's nothing project on it. Jackson did it. Well, I mean, there's a list of them. You know, did we vote to support all of these? No. No, we didn't vote to support any of them. Why don't you wait till we finish? You can do them all. Okay. Yep. Is that all right? One full suit? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Lydia, are you all set? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Sean. Um, uh, Article 21, um, still under CPC. Um, no, that's actually oh, sorry, we're, we're on something new. This is Open Space Committee. Right. Thank you. See if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer, $32,094. To ent uh, Ed asked about this earlier, I think. Mm -hmm. um, to enter into a contract for the $32,094 for hiking, for recreational trails, this will be a reimbursable grant. So um, that's what Article 21 is about. Article 22 to see if the town will vote to authorize revolving funds for certain town departments. This is what we just talked about, Correct. community garden, DPW, motor grader, and hazardous materials. Uh, Article 23, to see if the town will transfer sum of money from fiscal year 2018 ambulance surplus to the ambulance fund or take any action there too. Uh, Article 24, to see if the town will determine, um, oh, this is just uh, how all the different the the budget. budget article. So, um, um, going back. Did you just ask a question about 22, 21? I understand it's reimbursable, but is the intent to borrow it or is CPC going to put up the money? It's to borrow. Well, this, it's to borrow because this one ultimately came under um, anticipation loan. Well, I understand that, but couldn't, couldn't, I mean. By open space. If, oh, it's one, by open this space. This one is, yeah. yeah it's not uh, uh, okay, so do we, want to, um, do we want to accept the motion to, uh, Recommend articles 18 through 20. Is that a motion? Do I have a second? Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can, can I ask the school a quick question about this is just for a field hockey field? Yes. Not multi purpose. No. Multi purpose soccer. No. Why not? Aqua. That, that we uh, we talked about it last week. We just wondered. So those fields are already established. It's a new area up there. 
this is a new area moving the field hockey field behind from behind the center school I, I can tell you that we did look at that as our first option we got multi purpose field yeah it would be a lot larger and would not be that existing space okay yeah, that, was, that was the deciding factor yeah. that and, no. and cost as well. Right. But but yeah. Right. So you you'll use the new field instead of the center school field. Well, eventually. Oh, yeah. Eventually. Once it's established. Once it's the new field, once it's established, will be a game field. Uh, anticipating still using the other field as a practice field. Okay. That's all just field right now. You know, once that center school is has residents in it and parking, um, and parking with buses and everything down there now on, on game day is is if you've ever driven by in the middle of the day on a field hockey day, it's, it's tough. pretty busy. <laughs> it's pretty busy. So, uh, and I think part of the logic that we use as well for for looking into this, uh, you know, uh, from a school perspective, is not only the parking. But you've got all the facilities right there. I mean, you're, you're, you're playing at your school. You've got bathrooms and facilities, whereas you're just down. You know, Sounds down great. There. I mean, I just, it's unfortunate that then maybe some of that land couldn't have been put into the center school deal, which might have greatly increased the value of the property. But yeah, it just down. is what it is. Yeah, it, had, it was voted down, yeah. And yeah. 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 You, you also yeah. have recreational fields down there, too. Yeah. There's oh, a baseball yeah. field down there, too. Right. Still. Yeah, yeah. Right. Use a lot. Not just yeah. field hunting. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the elementary right. school still use that. There's field. a lot of rec programs, and I need that field. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and then yeah. Article, tw so Article 24 was the budget. Yeah. Article 25. Um, is the usual any other reports to do with the welfare of the town and so at this point uh, for town meeting next week there's 25 articles we have some budget at least one budget concern that I have we didn't end up talking about the cost of living increases for non-union employees so we so essentially did nothing Right. non-union employees right. in the budget. I mean, I know we had talked about talking about it. But we didn't. Yeah, yeah. So as a potential free cash thing. Yeah. We're not cutting budgets and giving raises. I mean, we <laughs> on, the, on a 1%, um, if we were to give town employees non-contractual 1%, what is that figure? We just, we couldn't... Uh, couldn't remember what that was last it's year. Not very much money. It's yeah. not, right? No, but I'm just curious. It's not. Yeah. Because it's not very many people. Right. I mean. Yeah, and and we would careful. We try to do it with just people, you know, not full, you know, full and part time, but not elected officials. Right, 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 right. Even if even if you throw in elected officials, it's not yeah. that much of a difference. It doesn't really make much. Money. Yeah, the nickel you made last in the last year will be. Stuff, yeah, I mean, it's just usually considered a yeah. not great practice to not do those increases yeah. when they work alongside union folks getting the exact same increase. But I guess I know. I mean, I don't disagree with you, Sean. Yeah. But, yeah. I agree. Okay. Do we know where it would be? Yeah. Can we perhaps just but, get that for next time? Oh yeah, we absolutely. Can get that number. Get that. Yeah. I mean, I know. I, Based on on. Uh, fiscal year 18. Sure. In terms of yeah, salaries, well, right. What did we do in fiscal year 18? Um, Were we I think 2%? we did a 2%. We did a 2%, oh. so it would be about half. Remember we did two We did two and three, three. depending oh. where it was. Oh, where that's, right. Right. that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, employees less than $20 an hour, 3%, right. greater than 22%. That's yeah. right. Yeah, we Are were going to do a 2%. Right? Yeah. Exclude us as elected officials because... I don't think as elected officials we should be getting a COLA increase, which we did last year. We, we were excluding elected officials. Well, I'm just making sure because or can, can people who have contracts shouldn't yeah, get it either. We don't yeah, we were excluding every, every year. Yeah. I would think it excludes people with contracts anyway, right? Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. No. It doesn't? It doesn't. Union. Union. Union contracts. Union contracts. contracts. Union contracts. contracts. So fire chief, well, police chief. Still have to open up a contract to go to yeah. for pay. Yeah. Why well, would that you do contractual? You discussed that when you open up contracts. It wouldn't make sense otherwise to do why, it. I mean, I'd have to look. Every contract's individual. So if the contract, right, if the contract in it says 
you get a cola, oh, yeah, right? The contract says you get the cola. That's the difference. Right. Yeah. 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 right. And they do. And they do. Most, most of them that. say that. Yeah. Yeah. They you get whatever cola right. other employees yeah. get. No, I'm just asking. I'm just okay. No, that's okay. A good question. question. That's, that's, purpose. that's all right. Question. Do we have a question? Save some money. <laughs> it's a good question. Do you, I mean, this is for you. Okay. I, I understand that you're cutting, I mean, it's just a very, it's a very small number of people that you're impacting, and basically, you know. It was a big impact to the schools last year, which we didn't take into account when we said every employee in the town was no, going to no, get I, a. I know it's a big impact to the school. No, the, the, the rate, the, the, the non-union. I mean, we've got the custodial staff, the office staff, you've right. got the kitchen staff, and what we uh, mistakenly or didn't realize when we gave it to all town employees was that increased the school budget. So that had to be made up somewhere else. So we've got to be careful when we yeah. just do whatever anybody's discussing. I must say I have a problem giving out any raises when we're cutting everybody's budget 1% or 2%. That's how I feel. But well, we are but, giving raises to all yeah. contract employees. We're just yeah, contract employees, Sean, because they're under a contract. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I mean, you know, the budget's in rough shape. I, you know. Okay. I, I mean, that's my opinion. I, you know, we, you guys are, you guys can discuss in the it. Past, and we explain the school thing again, because I swear, in the past, when we've given raises, it's been to town hall staff and whatnot. I didn't realize Correct. last year we did it. It, we came it was the percentages. We, 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 didn't in, we, didn't, we don't include we the can't. school because the school, that's in the school's budget. We did it because, well, how could you, we go back to how if everyone's sitting next to somebody who gets a raise or doesn't, how are we going to? It just yeah. takes by surprise. Yeah. Right. We, uh, because we, we figured in for our non-contractual, oh. we figured in for the 2%. Right. So, and all of a sudden, it was three percent. Right. So, and so you went with the three percent well, because everyone else was giving. The school committee so, had to revisit it, and we had to find. Can somebody. I ask a question then, and for equity purposes? In your current budget, you have a, you have zero percent cola for all your non-contractual employees. We have a two percent in our budget right now. So they're giving a two percent to all the school non-contractual. Well, most of our we most, steps hold, now. hold on, most of our most of our employees are in steps now. Yeah. No, but all your lunch ladies you don't even make minimum wage. Our lunch ladies are, the lunch program is, is not in the budget. Right, okay. the self-sufficient so program. Yeah, but when you factor that in, they're, they're not even at minimum wage. Actually, they will be next year. In this budget? Yeah, it's not, they're not in the budget. They're paid out of the They're paid out of the, oh, okay. But, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, but, that's good news. But so they will be, yeah, really we have brought up the, the, the two that were not at minimum so wage have to minimum wage. Yeah. <laughs> to we to thin. To Sean's point, so now you're giving, the, the contractuals are contractual, so they're in there. Now you've got all the non-contractuals at the school are all getting it. So how many employees are you really left with in this town that are pretty much getting nothing? While well, probably 90% of everyone is. Less than 10. All the people at the town? I would, I would bet. I that's would what bet. I mean, that's You're only talking 2%. If that impacted us four or $5,000, I'd be surprised if yeah. it was even that much. Yeah. Even up to 10, I mean, yeah, I think I want to save as much as possible. We just forgot this earlier. We meant to talk about this. This yeah. should have been part of the discussion. Um, just doesn't seem right to leave out. A handful. We've never done that before, and it, since I've been on the committee, leave out just a handful of people. So, well, how do we amend? We could amend the budget that we voted to include. We'd have to like to have a number, though. Hundred, uh, roughly 142,000 fiscal year 18 based on the increases, COLA increases. For all employees. For 18, for all employees. Right. Well, that's it was right. 142,000. That's, 100, that's, that's, that's all employees. Yeah, that doesn't really tell us. That doesn't tell much. us. Yeah. No. No, what we need to know, we're, this is like, would be like way up. A couple of percent of yeah. that. No, you're... You're talking, yeah. You to go straight yeah, I mean, who are you talking about? You, you'll about be talking that. about the police officers. Would you be talking police, about the fire department? Fire. We gave them to the fire uh, last year. For police, 18. fire, which would include ambulance and Inspectors. then. And health, yeah, the health, health agent. Yep. Health agent, inspectors. All the, all the inspectors. inspectors 
The COA director and her assistant. COA. Right. And Treasurer, clerk. Correct. Maybe town, town clerk and, and assistant clerk and town clerk. And clerk, and town clerk. And clerk are currently elected. Right. But yeah, they but received it. In the. In, he's talking about in the future. If you're talking oh. people, you're not doing elected. Well, <laughs> in in the past. Yes. Full time elected officials. Our employees. We, well, that right. we considered that yeah. as part of, <laughs> so. Based on the HR policy, they're considered library regular license? employees. Same would be the, li you would include the library mm -hmm. in that. Um, Transfer. Tra what? Transfer <coughs> station. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Cemetery. Cemetery guys, right. I make full-time cemetery guys, right? They're all part time, but yeah. <laughs> do you think? Well, how, how about Marlene? Do you think you come up with a number before next week? I mean, we can always amend the budget mm -hmm. yeah, on got, town floor. Yeah, remember that sheet last year? We worked. That's what I was just thinking of. Yeah, I know. Remember, it's just twenty thousand is what's coming to mind. Yeah. 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 You want, I, I, Marlene and I created a sheet last year, so we'll do it all from the numbers of the 2% for these list of people that I well, have. You can always, if, if, you, if you can always reduce or increase it. You know, exactly. I mean, you know what 2% we'll is, then you so know I'll start what 1% is. Because right. DPW is getting their 2% two two that contract. Yeah. Yeah. Teachers are approximately 2%. Two. Two yeah. Yeah. Teachers are. I know what Teachers all over the place. I know. Yeah. And that's why I say approximately. Yeah, so, so outside of teachers, so steps, yeah. uh, outside of teachers, we have just our, our paraprofessionals. Are, um, they're approximately two percent uh, on their steps. We created some steps so that right sort of control it. So that we, we know every year. So if, and, and the reason I ask is so if we brought everybody. Actually, those are the only ones that are on the other than teachers. It's really just paraprofessionals and four custodians. Everybody else. Is, it's under contract. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we, so are we yeah. going to get a number? They have, they have, they yeah. Have yeah. Yeah, I think we should try to address it. I mean, it really seems. We'll, we'll see what the number is. Let's see what the number is. Depending on what the number is, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, as a devil's advocate, we're already at, uh, what, 39,000 mm -hmm. below levy limit? Mm -hmm. So, that's where this money would come from? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Yeah, because couldn't be very much. We don't want to. We don't want to ding that number too right. too low. No. I don't think the number was very high though when we sat down and did it last yeah, year. Yeah, see, the that's really was. what I'm. Remembering. I think with the two and three percent, it was at twenty thousand. That keeps coming to mind around twenty thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe see, that's twelve. That's what I was thinking too. Sounds. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll so get a number. So if we did half of it, I guess six. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. yeah. You'd at least be doing something. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah, because, yeah. all right. Anything else? No. So we meet <coughs> 6 o'clock next Tuesday. Okay. At Smith Academy. Smith Academy. Don't be here. Um, I have minutes from the last meeting. Oh. But okay. I can just hand them out. We can talk about them. What should we do? No, let's do minutes now. All right. Then. Well, we we can actually adjourn and let. Yeah. 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 Let's, for, well, you will adjourn. So yeah, I'll yeah. make a motion. Uh, thank you all very much for all your input over these last few months, financial team included, Marlene. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second a motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, John. <laughs> all right.